Hey there, I'm Tim Gray, and in this video, we're gonna talk about HDR, or high dynamic range photography. Today's cameras are pretty remarkable, but they still have their limitations, including when it comes to exposure range. So for example, here, I've got a photo that was exposed well for the wheat in the foreground, but as you can see in the image itself, as well as in the histogram, we've lost a lot of detail in the sky. The sun's completely blown out. There's very little detail in the clouds, just a little bit of cloud over on the left-hand side. And so I'm gonna use HDR to create an image with much more detail in it. You can see that in this case, I've already captured a set of bracketed exposures, and that's the first step in HDR. We want to create a sequence of images with bracketed exposures so that we've got all of the detail in the photo cover. So I typically start with a photo such as this one where I've lost virtually no highlight detail at all. Perhaps I've lost a little detail in the sun, but overall I have highlight detail. And then I'll make a brighter and a brighter exposure either with manual adjustments or with automatic exposure bracketing until I have a photo where I have all of the shadow details as well. And then I can take all of those images and combine them together into a single HDR or high dynamic range image. In this case, using Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. So I'll start off by clicking on the thumbnail for the first image that I want to assemble. And then I'll hold the shift key on the keyboard and click on the thumbnail for the last image so that I have all five, in this case, photos selected. I can then go up to the menu and choose photo followed by photo merge and then HDR. When I choose that option, the dialog for HDR will come up. This is where I'm able to set the various options for how I will merge the individual exposures into an HDR image, and then I'll be able to perform that post-processing, the tone mapping that will determine what the final image looks like. You can see that I get a preview here within the HDR merge preview dialog. There are a couple of options that I can take a look at here. First off is auto align. Most of the time for HDR captures, I'm using a tripod, so there's really no change in camera position from one photo to the next. And yet I always recommend using the auto align option so that the photos will be adjusted as needed so that every pixel lines up perfectly, at least in terms of camera movement. There might still be issues in terms of movement within the frame, which will be handled by a separate option. Then we have the auto settings option. And this really is about applying develop adjustments automatically based on an analysis of the photo. That might not necessarily sound like a good thing, but especially for HDR, because we're covering such a huge range of tonality, I find it helpful to have that automatic initial adjustment. And then I can of course refine from there. And then we get down to the de-ghost amount. How much are we going to apply de-ghosting to the image? And this is a different kind of movement. This is the movement within the frame from one photo to the next for those bracketed exposures. So if there was a breeze and the wheat field here is moving around a little bit, I'll want to make sure that I'm not getting multiple variations, different positions for different wheat from different exposures, creating a ghosted image. Depending on how much movement there was in the scene at the time of capture, you can choose between no deghosting, the none option, or low, medium, or high. In this case, there was actually no movement at all. It was perfectly calm, not any breeze whatsoever. And so actually, I know that there was no movement. And one of the ways I know that is looking at the preview image, there is no red overlay. The red overlay would indicate areas where deghosting is being applied. And right now I have the high option selected. There's no deghosting visible at all. And so I could just choose in this case, the none option. But basically I wanna make sure that the red overlay indicates areas where I believe there was motion in the frame between the individual exposures. I can then also choose whether or not I want to create a stack for all of the individual exposures plus the new HDR image that I'm about to create. I do find it convenient to stack those together so that essentially one thumbnail represents all of these images, the original bracketed exposures plus the HDR. So pretty straightforward, obviously. Not too many options I need to concern myself with. I can simply click the Merge button and all of those individual captures will be processed and blended together into a single HDR image, which will be saved as an Adobe DNG or digital negative file. Once all of that processing is complete, you'll see that I have a set of adjustments that were applied automatically based on that auto settings checkbox that I turned on. But I can of course go through and fine tune, maybe I'll darken down the shadows a little bit in order to create a little more density there, a little bit more contrast. I'll boost up the vibrance so that I get a little bit more saturation in the colors for the photo. 
I could fine tune the overall color as needed, and otherwise make use of all of the adjustments in the develop module to fine tune the image. But as you can see, it's quite simple to create an HDR image quickly and easily in Lightroom.